Yes, I'm back with my favorite stock, JP Morgan, my favorite stock. I know it doesn't have a high dividend. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait till when's the earnings date? January the 14th. Next week should be earnings date. So I'm going to assume that January the 14th is going to be earnings date. So, ah. Uh, I'm just going to assume that by the end of the month, uh, we should have gotten our dividends for JP Morgan. Unfortunately, probably should have bought more JP Morgan. But anyway, why do I like JP Morgan so much? I think in the one video, I explained it. If, if you didn't get it, you can go back and watch that video where I was all like, this is why you want to buy JP Morgan for a dividend, right? JP Morgan has reached a point where it's almost too big to fail. They went through a market crisis. And instead of going bankrupt, like a lot of other companies and and people losing pensions, they bought a freaking bank, right? They got things got tough for them, and they bought. I think they bought Lehman Brothers or Bear Stearns, one of them. But J.P. Morgan bought one of those banks. They were one of the only banks, if not only companies, that were able to basically do that. Besides Warren Buffett, but besides that. They were one of the only ones that were able to do such things. So, um, I mean, there was a huge scandal behind it. But the point I want to make here is that they've reached that point. they backed by the U.S. government. So, think about it this way. They are backed by a government which has the reserve currency of the world as its currency. And they're backed by them. <laughs> so, they've reached a point where it's just like, we, 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 we good, you know. Um, uh, this is not to say they would never make a loss, but it is to say they're not going to collapse anytime soon. This is like a multi-generational stock. At least up until some idiot um, comes in and takes JP Morgan. But, hey, you know, if, if, if JP Morgan continues the way that it does, um, you want to, you want to own this stock forever. Um... And if and if you and if you can buy the stock for your kids, you want to buy the stock for your kids. You want to buy as much of the stock for your kids as you can because when your kids grow up, they will have thirty rands to the dollar, if not more. And it's gonna seem like a crazy dream when you tell them you remember when the dollar was at seven rand to the dollar. Just like I remember when it was seven rand to the dollar. I think even five rand to the dollar. Uh, that by then I was just like. I was, I was, I knew a few things, but besides that, then you've got parents that are like, well, we remember when, I don't know, like a rand was equal to a pound or something ridiculous like that. And you're just like, I can't comprehend a rand equaling a pound. So the same thing is going to happen with kids. Now imagine, and this is kind of my point, imagine if this situation existed and your parents when you were like five or something, um, or ten, whatever the case is, decided, you know what, for pounds, decide, you know what you're going to do. We're going to buy um, an English bank and we're just going to buy it for you, right? We're going to buy, I don't know, ten shares of the English bank and you'll just reinvest that. And yeah, well, and they don't even have to tell you about it. And it's just there. And they probably tell you about it when you're like, I don't know, 15 or something and you don't pay attention and you wake up one day and you own I don't know 50 shares of Barclays and they tell you well we bought it when I don't know it was at like 10 pounds and at 10 pounds 10 rands is equal to 10 pounds so essentially we bought that you just think to yourself mom dad thank you like thank you and that's what you want to do now is you want to you want to do this before one day you wake up and JP Morgan chases at like four hundred dollars a stock, right? Um, you want to be able to say to your kids, "Yeah, I bought it at about one hundred and thirty, and your kid will be like, and that's at one hundred and four hundred and fifty. Like, thanks, right? And it's been reinvesting its dividends. So not only is that the case, but not only did you buy me like I don't know five stocks or ten stocks of JP Morgan in my lifetime, you've also been reinvesting it for me automatically. So now I've got like 20 stocks of JP Morgan. Thanks. You know, you've built my retirement fund. Anyway, that's basically, in my mind, it's just perfect stock. 
Um, these are the types of things you want to get into. Um, things that you know you you're gonna you're gonna sleep well. Um, the other thing is the, the banking sex is not gonna get hit again. Um, with the next crash coming, it's not gonna be caused by the banking sector. It'll be caused by something else. Anyway, point is you want to get into this. Um, I know that they think it's over. They think it's fairly valued. Um, I think that it may dip over time, but I think that in the long run, it's still going to be of great value to jump into JP Morgan. It's safe, it's reliable, it's got a dividend that's slightly above market value. So if you really don't want to do, if you don't want to have this crazy portfolio and you want something safe, just pump a whole lot of money into JP Morgan and you're good. You're good. That's what you want to do. Because I think JP Morgan over the long term also basically beats the S&P 500. So you want to just pump a whole lot of money into the S&P 500 and then just reinvest that money over and over again and bada bing, bada boom, you're in. Anyway, thanks for listening. Um, press the subscribe, the share, thumbs up. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Cheers.